Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Divine Report. I'm your host, Brother Antoine, here, and we are back again with another episode. It's been a while since we've done a panel, but tonight we are back with a part three of a panel that we started early in the year, being young and saved in modern times. I feel like it's a very important subject. Um, us young people as well, you know, us young people, we have a lot that we can say um, concerning the times uh and just the atmosphere and climate that we're living in in today's time um so we have two special young people here two young men who i feel have been uh a great example for what young people should be striving for in these last and evil days uh, very sincere brothers uh have a great head on their shoulders uh striving to please the lord and really just striving to be saved on these times um not easy especially for the young people. But without further ado, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. And then we're going to get into some dialogue tonight. And we just pray that the Lord will bless this conversation and somebody would be helped. So without further ado, Brother Jamal, we're going to start out with you, followed by our dear brother Aaron. All righty. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, my name is Jamal Tabs. Um, I'm originally from Prince George's County, Maryland, but I'm currently out in Salisbury, Maryland, attending Salisbury University, and I graduate this semester, so um, I'm very thankful for that. And um, my church is um, New Beginnings Apostolic Church, which is also located in Salisbury, and I'm just so grateful to be here. Awesome, awesome. Brother Aaron. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Aaron Lowe. I attend Greater Morning Star Apostolic Ministries under Bishop Charles E. Johnson. I'm 22 years old. I just recently graduated from Towson University after leading campus ministry there. Uh, graduated August 3rd. So, excellent, excellent. Now that's good stuff, man. So, okay, that's awesome. So, brother Aaron, you recently graduated. Um, brother Jamal, you're still in school currently. What what year is this for you? I'm a senior. You're a senior. Nice. Okay. So graduation is right around the corner for you. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet. So this is beautiful. <laughs> Makes it even more better. Um, so let's just start now, guys. Um, let's go back to the beginning. You obviously, you know, you you guys, or even myself, which you know, still fairly young, but getting just to get a little bit of you all's backstory. Um, Jamal, let's start out with you, man. Uh formerly Trinitarian, formerly was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. uh, or what have you. So just Give us a little background of your journey. Like, when did you find yourself on that search for the truth? When did you realize, like, hey, I'm not where I'm supposed to be? Um, so for me, my um the the young lady that I'm courting right now, um, she was the one who I would say was always um pressing the truth on me, if that makes sense. She would always invite me to her church, which is the church that I now attend in Salisbury. And this was before we were even courting uh, because we were friends for uh, several years before, you know, we started courting. And, you know, she would all actually know it started out even before that when I was in community college. Mm -hmm. I was uh, um, in PG County. And um, I remember it was, I think, Cameron Hawkins and James Chandler. I don't know if y'all know them. Yeah, they, yeah. And, their church nice that's nice and that's when the seed was really planted um and at the time of course i said no thank you because i had heard nothing but bad things about you know apostolic people like you know that's false doctrine um and stuff like that and then when i came to salisbury you know my future wife and her sister they always want me to come to their church and i was like no i don't want to go to an apostolic church and then we ended up, you know, courting, you know, my future wife and I, and I knew I had to make a decision because I knew I couldn't be believing some, something separate to what she was believing. And then, you know, it will work out because it doesn't work like that. So I took it to the Lord in prayer, like earnestly praying about it every day, like, okay, Lord, because even, even before that, I was praying and asking God, Lord, I want to know the truth. I want to preach the, the truth. I don't want to be a false teacher. That was one of my biggest fears mm. when I first got saved. 
I didn't want to be a false teacher. I wanted to tell God's people the truth, even if it caused me to be hated and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, eventually I ended up, you know, attending New Beginnings for the first time and I'll never forget it. As soon as I walked in that little small church, it's a very small church, but as soon as I walked into there, I kid y'all not, I felt the presence of the Holy Ghost just like that. Wow. And I, I've been there ever since. I love it. Um, I, because I've never had a church home, you know, um, you know, cause growing up my family, uh, my immediate family was lukewarm. So we never really went to church. We went to church like three times my entire life growing up. Mm. Uh, so, you know, being in that church and being able to have, have a church home, uh, it's just truly a blessing. And to now be in the truth is truly a blessing. And, you know, I'm just so grateful to God that he opened up my eyes and revealed, you know, the truth of the gospel to me. So I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's excellent. Uh, Brother Aaron, um, I'm sure your story is a little different. Um, did you grow up in church? Just give us a little yes. journey. Yes, yeah, sir. Take us through your journey a little bit. Yeah, grew up in Apostolic Church, Greater Morning Star. I got baptized when I was six, maybe five years old. So I got baptized at a really young age, not fully understanding what it was all about, you know, and all the scripture to back it up at the time, but just was moving by faith as a little kid. And, and then at the age of 14, got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And um, that's 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 my journey. I, I throughout high school, um, kind of just you know more so going through the motions. And mm. it really was uh, when I was leading campus ministry at Towson that I just started praying more and taking my walk with God more seriously. Mm. Uh, and then. This is just a part of my testimony now. So definitely I'll, I'll mention it uh, just, you know, very, very briefly, the brief, brief summary of it. But um, even in this past year, uh, it was a, a big time lapse, really, mm -hmm. that I had. And I ended up talking with my bishop uh, just about some things. And he had given me the direction to go to the Terry room and get a refilling. Mm -hmm. And so on July 18th, 2021 i got a refilling and i'm just so thankful to the lord for his grace and his mercy and uh his goodness in my life so now nah, that's a blessing brother that's a blessing so with that being said um i'm gonna come back to you brother aaron um what was your outlook um you know growing up in church what was your outlook on being saved before actually experiencing a new birth and of course as you stated getting that refilling what was your outlook on being saved yeah um it was just everything is just gonna be really 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 just all easy and just <laughs> <laughs> not too many problems or issues it just really you know uh all all good all the time this all night uh and and that's that's definitely not the case uh mm. someone that is saved and young especially because the enemy is after us especially when you get into ministry and look mm. into save you know um <laughs> yield to the lord to be a help to others and to see them saved and other people saved so now it's it's um it is a journey for sure but it's something that I thank God for that I do have a knowledge of the truth and have the truth. Excellent. Excellent. Brother Jamal, what about yourself? Um, I know you didn't grow up <clears throat> of, of course, believing the apostolic doctrine, but what was your outlook uh, on being saved or did you even have a perspective, you know, before coming into the truth? Well, thankfully, even though I didn't grow up uh, in the truth, the Lord laid a foundation uh, for salvation for me. And I say that because I went to a Christian school my entire life, Riverdale Baptist School, um, Largo. And, um, you know, thankfully through being there, you know, I, I, I was still able to learn about the word and attend chapel every week and stuff like that. But honestly, I think the biggest thing I struggled with, you know, growing up was 
just consistency because it it, it always felt like something was missing. Mm-hmm. Now I look back at it, um, you know, I would be one of the few people at chapel who would go up um, to the altar, you know, every, every chapel, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the preacher would say, you know, if you want to give your life to the Lord, you know, come up and we'll pray for you type thing. And I was always up there because I I wanted to get my life together um, and stuff like that. But I was just really struggling and it, and it just felt like I, I was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. You know, at the time I didn't know it was true. Um, kind of what Aaron said, really, I, I, I thought it was going to be easy. I remember when I truly committed myself my senior year of high school, mm-hmm. when I truly committed myself to the even though I hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet and, you know, I hadn't been re-baptized in Jesus' name. But, um, you know, I thought it was going to be easy. I low-key thought it was going to be a cakewalk. Um, and that is the furthest thing, you know, from the truth. Mm. Um, you know, if you're truly trying to be a disciple of Christ, you're going to have to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to be tested. You're going to have to endure temptation and that type of thing. And you know, that was something that I really had to adjust to because, you know, being in this walk is definitely nowhere near easy. But, you know, we just have to remember what Jesus went through, yeah. when, you know, and uh, he was able to persevere. And if he could do it and we could do it because he's inside of us, you know, especially us Holy Ghost filled believers. So, um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you all. Uh, spoke to those, uh, you know, different avenues concerning that question. So your perspective on church, I want to talk about this a little bit. So, of course, being young, I like to ask this question uh, to my peer group. And of course, us as young people, as a young person, how important is the church to you? Like, how important is that to you, Brother Aaron? Definitely is very, very important. Um of course, just knowing the Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves mm. together. Uh, along with that, that is where you just can join together with your brothers and sisters and praise and really just feel, I feel like the presence of God is that's church services is one of the main places where the presence of God really is manifested. Definitely, I believe in uh, experiencing and wanting to get in the presence of God daily, mm-hmm. just even prayer and devotion. Um, but especially at a church service, when you're amongst other believers, it's great for that. It's great for um, other souls that have not yet known the Lord to come in and to get to meet uh, people that are already in the body of Christ and just to come and and go up to the altar and receive prayer Mm. and for the purpose of souls uh coming to hear the truth and the word of god yeah uh and then it's also good for fellowship um and just having a support system for people that already are in the body of Christ, people that have been in for 20 plus, 30 plus years, people that are just coming in and really looking to get grounded. And so you need connection with people in the church. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of different benefits for uh, not only like the church services and the church building, but the church family mm. also more is as is, is connected as you can be. I, I just got off the phone with the minister. I've been calling a lot more recently and I'm thankful to God for him and, and just for the iron sharpening iron. And, and that's, that's what it's about. So I'm thankful to God for the church for sure. Very important. Uh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Brother Jamal. Church, church is so important to me now, honestly, especially because once again, I had that background where I wasn't really in church. And then to now finally have a church home, you know, and where the preaching is sound and it's a family. I can't stress enough how crucial it is for every Christian to have a church home. Mm. And because you have some Christians out here who think, oh, I don't really need to have a home church. And I, and I don't think that's true. 
You know, you need to have somewhere where you can get fed, you know, spiritually every every Sunday. And another thing that I love about the church, especially my church, because it's so small, is it's a family. You know, we all pray for one another. We all know one another, you know, and it's just so refreshing. Like I was never the type of person who enjoyed church. And now I literally am so excited every Sunday to go to church. And and it's just church is just such a blessing. It really, really is. So yeah. Yeah, now that's good. That's good. Um so brother Jamal, and- um oh, go ahead, go ahead, brother Aaron. Yes, sir. If, if I can add to that, you just reminded me, Jamal, of another point uh, as far as like people that may say how they don't really need the church and, you know, they have their own devotion and everything like that, their own prayer, their own studying that they do is also the importance of a pastor mm. and how much of a biblical principle that is from the beginning to in the letters. Uh how important it is to have a shepherd that's after God's own heart Mm. uh, over you and someone to be the authority over you, not the, you know, ultimate authority, which is the word of God and God himself, but that under shepherd is needed. And so it's just so many reasons why we do need the church and the pastor and and all of that. So just want to add to that point. You reminded me of that. Ah, That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, So with that, I mean, I guess living in an age where, uh, and not just young people, this is pretty much something that happens across the board. But since we're this is uh, regarding being young and uh, being young and saved um, amongst the young people. Why do you think nowadays uh, young people don't feel the church building to be a necessity? As you all stated, you know, we have virtual church. We have, uh, you know, you can turn on facebook and you can watch an inspirational sermon you can um you know you can sort of it's almost like a buffet out here so what do you say to that to someone who says well i don't have to physically be there i mean i can watch it on facebook that's good enough for me brother jamal i would say to that person yes you can watch it on facebook and that type of thing but to me it truly is different actually being there in the presence of the Lord. Because there are certain things that you will not be able to experience on your phone watching the service virtually, uh, you know, rather than if you're there actually experiencing church with everyone else. Mm. And I think that's one of the dangers of the time that we're in is, is that is that there's just so many people who have that very mentality that you just mentioned, Brother Antoine. You know, I'll just watch it, you know, from home. My, my mom does it, and, and for example, and I, I'm, I'm happy because for my mom, the fact that she's even, you know, uh, watching church in the first place, is a step mm-hmm. in the direction. But once again, you know, I, and I even try to tell her when I'm home, you know, going to church, the experience for you is going to be so much more different than you just watching it virtually. So I, I think what I would say to that person If I haven't said it already, it's just like, you know, yes, I understand the conveniency of just watching it on your phone or your laptop or whatever. But but you need to go into the church and experience Mm. for yourself. You need to fellowship with other believers because and and there could even be a blessing in store for you that you could be missing out upon because you just want to stay in in, in the comfortableness, if that's a word, of your phone. (laughs) You know, yeah. It, to sum up what I'm saying, basically, you know, it's be- it's just better to go to church in person. It's, it's, it's just that simple. So I hope I hope that makes sense. No, absolutely. Well said. Well said. Brother Aaron. Yeah. Um, could you repeat the question one more time? I'm probably going to ask that several times. There. Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. So pretty much I was just, you know, after you and uh, Brother Jamal, you know, eloquently spoke about. Uh, the importance of being in the church building and congregating with the saints of God, what would be your response to, you know, your peer group saying, well, you know, it's on Facebook. I I can watch it virtually. I don't necessarily have to be in the church building. Um, And just to add to the question a little bit too, just for context and brother Jamal, you can, um, you can respond if, you know, you, you know, if you feel the need to, 
Um, even now, like, you know, spirituality is a big thing. What do you, you know, you have that where it's like, well, I'm spiritual. The church building doesn't necessarily mean I'm strong in faith and so forth and so on. You know, you have people burning sage, you know, you, you know, how you know what's going on. It's a lot of that stuff going on. So what do you say to somebody who say, well, I'm spiritual. I don't need the church building. Yeah. The, the ones that <laughs> what I say is the ones that are spiritual understand and, and have received the revelation from different places in the word of God that show how important just once again, fellowship is. Mm. Um, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship mm. and in a bread and in prayers, I believe that's not word for word. It's close to what that scripture <laughs> says, Acts 2, 2. And, and so you really do need that support system. You, you need other people, you need the church. You cannot do this walk just on your own. Cause if you were to have a time when you're struggling or you're falling short and you may not even realize there's nobody that's around you or nobody that can call you up or that you can call to really connect with and, and get that encouragement that you need. It's, it's so many different testimonies that you hear of a lot of people just in general that uh, would call up, you know, different people in the church and, and say, can you pray with me about that? Pray for me about this. And so you, you need it. You need the church for that reason, for that reason and fellowship for that reason. And also um, to receive a word. Now, definitely we can receive a word from the Lord just in prayer and just through studying the word. But that's another reason why it's been so many times, so many times where I have went to church and heard the Lord speak almost word for word what I needed to hear. Mm. Uh, through pastor and even through other just services that I've been a part of. And you're not getting that if you have that, I'm, you know, too spiritual for that approach. And I'm going to do this on my own or just me and my, my other, you know, friend or two friends or whatever, whoever are going to just, you know, do our own thing and, and not let any type of authority <laughs> over, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded of that scripture. Uh, where two or three to gather together in his name that he is there in the midst and and definitely that is true um but i feel like sometimes people can look at that scripture and say yeah i don't i don't need you know church fellowship no pastor over me or anything like that i can just gather together with him and her <laughs> we can have it right here you know and that's taking that scripture well out of context mm -hmm. so um definitely uh, we to part of being spiritual is is I pray that we receive the revelation that everyone receives the the understanding and revelation that church attendance and being a part of a church fellowship is a part of being spiritual <laughs> biblically. So that's that's what I say about that. Good stuff. Good stuff, brother Jamal. You wanted to say anything regarding that? Yeah, I can. Uh, to the person that considered considers themselves spiritual and, and in, in my time here at Salisbury, I've definitely ran into people who uh, burn sage and that type of thing. You know, you can burn all the sage you want or do whatever other thing that you do. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ <laughs> is far, far, far greater than mm. any spiritual thing that you can do so what i would say to that person is that i would still encourage them hey just come to church one time because you not you you never know what the lord could do for you mm. if you just just come just just to see what it's about you know because as brother aaron was just saying there there have been so many times for me as well in the short time i've gone to new beginnings where i've gone into church uh struggling with some things and the lord will use uh the the preacher to speak directly to me mm. and i can do that to the the spiritual person as well he could have a word for that person but you're you're never going to know if you don't you know come and at least see what the church is all about so i would just encourage that person look i understand you believe this and you do that but just give it a try because god might you know go and do something you would never expect mm. so 
that, that would be my answer to that person. That's, that's good. That's good. Why do you all feel that young people are skeptical about the church nowadays? Why do you think some are like, uh, why do you think some would take the approach and say, well, you know, the, all the church wants is your money. Or all the church wants to do is be in your business and so forth and so on. What would be, uh, well, I was ask it this way. Um, do you think that's justifiable? Do you understand that train of thought being young people? Brother Aaron. Um, so I, I guess to, to answer if I understand, um, if I put myself in their shoes, you could I could imagine that, you know, you see why they may have that mindset. And it's it's because of I feel a few things they have not really experienced the life change that the Lord can bring and that the true word of God can bring and true Christianity can bring to someone's life individually. And then also for many people, uh, because uh, a lot of different denominations and everything like that, not everybody really, you know, claiming Christianity, but not really walking in it. Uh, sadly, you they may see people in their circle or people a lot of people that they know that are saying that they're christian but not really walking in it at all and so then they see that and they don't see the difference and it's like okay what is what is the point what is the reason mm. to they get into it myself or to get in you know into going to church or praying on my own if they don't see much of a difference in the other Christians or or people that are saying that they're Christians at least around them and so I feel like those are just a couple of things that <clears throat> impact their you know not desire to really surrender to That's the Lord That's all good, brother Jamal yeah I would I would definitely say I can understand where people are coming from uh, who may have that mentality. And the reason why I say that is, and being someone who's on social media quite a lot, you see a lot of different type of Christians these days. And the main theme with many of these Christians is that we're hypocrites. Mm. Or, or I should say they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. And what I mean by this is, you know, they, they, they'll they say I'm a Christian all over social media, post scripture, have a Bible verse in their bio and stuff like that. But then if you actually know this person in, in real life, there's someone completely different. And there's a lot of churches like that as well that have, you know, it, it may seem a, a nice big church on the outside and stuff like that. But then you go inside and there's all sorts of stuff taking place. And I think you know, it's important that we, you know, represent church correctly because, you know, people, people are always, you know, watching you, whether you may realize it or not. So it's important if we're, if we're going to say we're a true disciple of Christ, we have to represent Christ right because people are paying attention. Mm. And it honestly breaks my heart because I, I see it so many times with so many different mega churches and stuff like that i'm not saying all mega churches are bad but a lot of them they are they are money hungry let's be real you know you got people like you know for example joel Holstein or somebody like that who makes it very clear that they're all about the money mm, that's right so so basically what i'm trying to say is if we're going to claim to be disciples of christ and especially if you are a holy ghost filled believer who is in the truth you gotta you gotta live this walk right because you know if you're out here and I was a victim of this. I, I'm an honest and transparent person. I could be honest and transparent with y'all and whoever is listening to this video. I was one of those people before um, who would go on social media, post all this stuff, you know, had a few viral tweets or whatever. But then my my personal life was trash. Mm. I'm honest, you know, and God disciplined me and God humbled me and God took away my social media platform because I wasn't living correctly. Mm. So what, what I'm saying is, to sum up everything I just said, is that if we're going to clean and walk this walk for real, then we got to then we got to do it. We got to do it because there's souls in the line. There's people who truly want to know the truth 
uh, out there, you know, and, and we have to be the example of Christ that he has called us to be. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so far, you know, with where you are, you know, with where you guys are with your walk with Christ, what have you learned so far with the experience that you've experienced up until this point, brother Aaron? Well, definitely that he desires knowledge ultimately over everything, knowledge of him mm. and, and not just, uh, you know, a head knowledge or specifically a scripture knowledge. Of course, that is a part of it, you know, for sure. But overall, just like knowledge and, and knowing him and, and growing in relationship with him and intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship foundation, uh, which is ultimate, a number one most important thing and everything else flows from that ministry flows from that um, the way we live and how we act and our lifestyle flows from relationship mm. and if you try and do any of that backwards or prioritize anything else uh you know over that even if it is ministry or you know works or any other things that may seem spiritual but it's prioritized over just knowledge of god and growing in revelation of god and who he is and his character and his thoughts and his ways and his heart then uh it's it's gonna be tough and it's it's not really the will of god for it to be in any other type of order so um he's definitely been helping me and, and growing me in that mm. um and so I'm, I'm thankful to god for that so that's that's definitely the most important thing i've i've been learning more for myself and it's been helping me to when i study the word to study it differently and when i pray to be more open and transparent with the lord and with myself and and so that's that's my <laughs> short sweet answer to that question uh, excellent man that's, that's 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 heavy right there brother jamal yeah this is a great question and i'm gonna go uh with something that the lord has been showing me recently um so basically what the lord is showing me is i feel like for most of my walk up until this point i was low-key kind of trying to do this walk as a to-do list if you if you may say like i used to ask the lord things like lord can i do this mm. do that is that sin or or is it not that type of thing and i and the personal example i'm going to give is the type of music that i used to listen to when i first committed my life to Christ, you know, even before I was full Holy Ghost and we baptized. But yeah, um, when I first gave my life to Christ, the first thing that, um, one of the first things I did was like, I was like, okay, God, so you know, I love rap and I love metal because when I was in the world, that's the music I listened to. Lord, can you help me find some Christian rap and Christian metal? So yeah, that's, that's literally how it went. That was one of the first things mm -hmm. I talked to God about because um, music has always been a huge part of my life. I was in the choir for a lot of my time at Riverdale and stuff like that. So, yeah, so going into, you know, into into this, you know, I built a huge playlist for both genres. One had a thousand songs, the other had about 400. And, you know, I would listen to it every day. And in reality, it became an idol. And, and what I had realized that music was already my idol as it was. And now I had, even after I commit life to Christ, I had made, even Christian metal and Christian rap and idol. Mm. Fast forward to now, this year, and you know, the Lord changed the way that I that I view my walk really. And it's like instead of asking God, what can I do? What can I not do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I asked the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, because I you see, I've been convicted, I've been convicted all this time. And I've been saved now. Well, if we're I commit my life to Christ, I'll say like, what is that, four, five years ago now? You know, so, so, you know, throughout all that time, I was getting convicted about the music that I listened to. 
but I would push it aside because I'm like, mm-hmm. this boy is Christian. They're talking about Jesus. It's fine, right? You know, but the Lord was convicting me and it came to this year where I said, you know what, Lord? Okay. Because I had to let this year in particular, I've had to let go a lot. I've had to surrender a lot. I've lost friends. Mm. Lost, I've, I've lost a lot this year, honestly. And it came to a point, I said, okay, God, do you want me to listen to this music? And I prayed about it. And the Lord, to make a long story short, he said, no, mm. I don't. you need to let this go. You've made it an idol. It is hindering you. Let it go. And I remember it came down to one day. And I was like, okay, God, I'm going to be obedient. You know, I know my obedience has been delayed at this point, but it's better to obey that, you know, at some point than not obey at all. Yes. I my playlist. Hmm. And I was never the one to listen to worship or gospel. That was the thing. And that was one of the things I told the Lord too when I first committed my life. And I'm like, I can't listen to worship and gospel. That's all I listen to now. Hmm. Listen to worship and gospel. And I listen to softer, very soft Christian rock rock to the point where you can still be in the presence of of god and you can still have a mindset of worship while listening to it that makes sense and that's a decision i never thought i would make you can ask any of the people who are around me in my circle they knew how much i love my music i would i would stand by my music you know no matter what but you know i came to that point where i'm at now where it's like lord i will do whatever you want me to do i want you i want your desires to be my desires and, and I think to sum it up, that's that's the biggest thing the Lord is showing me. It's not about what I want. When I gave my life to him, you know, it became about what he wants for my life. And now I'm living that out and I'm surrendering everything that I need to surrender so that he can use me in the way that he wants to use me. So I hope that makes sense. That's good stuff. Both of you are, man. That's that's I mean, really, 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 really great stuff right there, man. Like that's that's very encouraging to hear. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys a few more questions. We're almost done here. What's something um, do you do you think that we we often miss as young people, brother Aaron? Hmm. I mean, I feel like it can be a few things. Um, what do we miss? As young people. Well, I I mean, I'm just going right back to the last (laughs) answer. I feel like that's something uh, relationship and and how that's separate from do's and don'ts uh, and and really getting to a place to where this is more and more uh, uh, desire, as Brother Jamal was saying, that that Lord, your desires would be my desires and grow me and mature me to that point. Um, I believe that for a lot of young people, you can just say, well, I'm, you know, separate enough or, uh, you know, doing, doing this and, um, you know, praying and, um, studying. But if we're just going through the motions with things, and just doing Christian things to get them done, then it's it's not much real growth that mm. is taking place. And and also I believe that we ought to really be seeking the Lord more for compassion and a burden for others to be saved and for others to be helped just in general um and and just showing mercy and the love of god to other people in many different ways not always having to be teaching a bible study or preaching to somebody but really just being more thoughtful to others and uh being more selfless as young people Mm -hmm. we can also i feel get caught up in our own lives. I feel like, especially around um, my stage that I'm in uh, as a graduate uh, from college or something like that, and now you're you're focused on your job and your own, you know, what job you're gonna get, and you're focused on maybe for for you know for many young people, you may be thinking a lot about okay, 
so where is the for for you know for us guys where is the the lady at that, that <laughs> like, you know where is she at or, and then for the women uh vice versa jesus name <laughs> and, uh, yeah and um you know so it's it's a lot of things that can be going on just and and kind of distracting us and so that's another thing just against distractions altogether and now i'm kind of losing track of the question again but yeah uh, it's 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 a few things that can try and hinder us that we need to be prayerful and really focused on the lord asking him to help us to keep a focus in on him and doing his will good stuff good stuff man I, I'm, I'm i'm loving it i'm loving it brother jamal for me there's two things that stick out to me that we often overlook as young people one is the grace of god and the reason why i say the grace of god is because i know a lot of young people and i've met a lot of you know fellow young people at my college who are living recklessly mm. who are living wild and they have no idea how much god loves them and how much grace he is showing uh them i think about myself once again um i'm going to share this and i'm just the type of person i am i have nothing to hide you know because god has brought me through so much and I, you know i'm sharing this as a testimony to glorify him um i was addicted to porn uh for over a decade full-on addicted and there were so many times where i told god all right god i'm not gonna do it no more and the very next day literally the very next day the next morning i would do it god could have if i'm being real god could have smited me a long time ago bro Absolutely. i will i would make vows and say god i promise i won't do it i vow to you, i'll never do it again do it again mm. and thank god he has you know now brought me through that addiction and i even admit recently has brought me through that but once again i give god all the glory and the honor and, and the praise because he brought me through yeah yes. a long time but you know what i have learned to not question god's timing god's timing is perfect and he brought me through you know at the right time and i'm so thankful for his grace because like i said he could have said you know what yeah you know jamal is not going to stop anytime soon let me go ahead and get this boy out of here he could have did absolutely absolutely but you know but i'm still i'm still here as a testament to his grace and now i'm walking in freedom and and i'm so thankful and and, and so many people overlook that they think yeah you know I'll, I'll give my life to god when i'm 30 or when i'm 40. you don't you don't know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow mm. so don't take advantage of god's grace because yes we serve a merciful and gracious god but you know he, he does have an angry side and of course that's the side we don't see often but why pro why provoke god because when his anger does come it's very scary we've seen the stories in the word mm. of of, of, of it, when his anger was showed it's righteous anger and you know so that's one thing we need to well you know as christians as a whole we have to stop taking advantage of the grace of god you know it's a it's a blessing but we shouldn't misuse that blessing if that makes sense and then the second thing that i think we overlook is just to be able to have a relationship with god in the first place and to be able to live in a country where we can proclaim the name of jesus christ without the same persecution as some other countries may face there are certain countries where you will get your head chopped off or mm -hmm if you mention the name of jesus christ or you there's some countries that even still do crucifixion mm. saudi arabia and a few other countries we're blessed to be living in the united states of america to, to that we can proclaim like i said the name of jesus christ without really caring anything and and to just be able to have a relationship with christ in the first place and to be filled with his spirit is a blessing and i feel like that's something else that we take for granted once again i can speak for myself even after i was filled with the holy ghost and and, and rebaptized the name of jesus christ i i was there were still days where i wouldn't pray and i wouldn't read my word because some things happen really that's inexcusable because mm -hmm. god is far too good to us for us to be doing stuff like that 
Mm. That stuff by us through thick and thin. And for, for us to do that to him, that's unacceptable. So we have to realize how blessed we are that we can be able to have a relationship with him, that he has a perfect plan for our lives that will never fail. Even if we may not understand it right now, God is doing something amazing in all of our lives. And that is truly a blessing and a privilege. And I know I'm truly grateful to be a part of that. So, yeah, I hope I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that transparency. Definitely helpful there. Uh, want to ask you guys about two more questions um one you know earlier <clears throat> in your introduction i know brother aaron you recently graduated from towson uh brother jamal you're st- currently um a senior um being in school uh especially you know especially college um you all's experience um in what ways would you say your faith uh has been challenged in and out of the classroom uh brother jamal that's a great question. Um, I would say in the classroom, um, I've had, I've never really taken class that really is talking about God in a negative light, but I've had professors hmm. who really uh, do not believe in God, who would blaspheme God in the middle of, um, of um, class and make jokes, mocking God and stuff like that. And that was a, uh, that was difficult to sit through at times because, of course, part of me wanted to stand up and say something like, hey, you shouldn't be talking about God like that, but obviously I would have thrown out the class or something like that. So, you know, um, but that was definitely one thing that I had to contend with. But I would I would kind of counteract that by wearing my various Christian shirts that I have in my closet. So mm. the, by doing something that small, that can still plant a seed. And I would just try to be, you know, as Christ-like as possible when interacting with my professors and stuff like that as well. So, you know, they may be able to see hmm, there's something different in that young man right there. Hmm. So I try to plant a seed in that way in the classroom. Outside the classroom, going to a secular uh, university, going to a university that has a huge reputation of partying, um, you know, there's definitely there was definitely a lot of temptation. There was definitely a lot of temptation. Um, of course, girls, you know, as well, you know, before I was in my courtship, you know, there's a, a lot of women and stuff like that. So there, there's definitely, there was definitely a lot of temptation that I had to deal with, um, you know, making sure that I didn't surround myself with the wrong people and stuff like that um because for example i love basketball and before covid hit i would go play basketball in the gym every single day and i met so many people through that but once again i had to be careful to keep my distance so you know um if they were to invite me to a party or nothing like that you know i wouldn't even be in that position because like yes i would be cordial with them at the basketball court but i was still kind of keep them at a distance because i didn't want to fall into temptation so um to anyone who may be about to attend college, uh, it, you know, a few tips I could give very quickly is just make sure you surround yourself with the right people. Make sure you you surround yourself with the right people because there are there are there are people on this campus, even though it's few and far between, but there are people on this campus who do love Jesus and do and who do want to live for the Lord. And I was very blessed to be a part of a campus ministry for a few um, semesters, and I led for a few semesters as well called BCF. Um, and you know, that was definitely a blessing, even though they were non-denominational, um, and stuff like that. God still used that to help me still be around like-minded believers. Um, so that's, that's important, you know, find people who are trying to live for the Lord, like, like you are, you know, pray about it. Cause God will provide. If you pray about it, God will provide. Um, and the second thing is just stay grounded, stay grounded. You know, like I said, there's a lot of temptation when you come onto a college campus, and you know it's just so important that you stay grounded in your walk with the lord stay prayed up stay fasted up stay in the word because that will also go a long way in helping you not to get discouraged and helping you uh when your faith gets tried that you will be able to maintain your faith and overcome the various trials tribulations and temptations that you may face good stuff good stuff brother aaron yeah um so it wasn't 
exactly many classes or sessions that I can remember when uh, teachers were challenging uh, God's existence or, or really, you know, too much coming up against God. Uh, Towson was a really liberal kind of, they, they really tried to do their best job of being unbiased, mm -hmm. which was, you know, um, in certain ways, still not good because it's really liberal and in, in regards to some other things too. Uh, but then also they, they did their best job to not really come up against Christian beliefs and things like that also. So it was a lot of different clubs, a lot of different religions, really, really open. Uh, and so didn't, didn't exactly have that, but just, I guess, a challenge for me uh that that god was even helping me with during my time at towson was still standing firm in what i believed and not fitting in and and when an opportunity came to talk about jesus that i would do so and and when like if i'm just talking and, and the lord comes to my mind that i would you know as as time at Towson went on that he would help me to actually mention the Lord more mm. often, you know, more often invite people to Bible study or something like that. And so I, I guess in a way, a challenge in the classroom was just not uh, just, you know, fitting right in with everybody else, just here for school and that's it, you know, but, but really allowing the Lord to have his way through me if he wants to say something, you know, through me. Uh, that may be a help to somebody else in any type of way that I was going to obey God rather than men and, and say it or do it. And so he's been helping me basically to be more bold and, and trying mm -hmm. to be bold. And definitely that's still a process today uh, in my work environment and everything like that. So it's just, as you go on, you continue to look to progress and give it to God outside of the classroom. Uh, basically the, the same thing, just looking to represent God at all times. And it, it definitely can be a challenge, but as we rely on God and, and grow closer to him, he will help you with that. That's good. That's good. Final question for you both. Um, <clears throat> I think would sort of, uh, I guess, serve some encouragement for someone that possibly is watching, um, you know, hypothetically, or perhaps someone is watching and somebody young um, is watching and they don't know exactly what direction to go in concerning their relationship with Christ, whether they are struggling with reading, struggling with praying, struggling with uh, doing anything that will encourage or strengthen their walk with the Lord? What's something that you would tell them in this present moment? Um, and, you know, how would you direct them to, you know, be encouraged and move forward to strengthening their walk with Christ? Brother Aaron. Definitely, I would, I would want to encourage them not to put too much pressure on themselves and to not try and be a perfectionist when it comes to uh, their walk with God and, and growing in God and getting to know God more and becoming more like him. Because if we try and be a perfectionist, then it's just going to make things a whole lot harder and a whole lot uh, worse than you may end up giving up. Mm. And so definitely it's important to prioritize growth and to receive just the love of God daily and know that most importantly, he is pleased with the pursuit mm. and he's more so pleased with the direction that you're moving in and knowing that you are wanting to grow and surrendering yourself to God daily and uh, wanting to delight in him. And, and so not putting pressure on ourselves to be a basically a you know spiritual perfectionist <laughs> you know <laughs> and a christian perfectionist to where you just you have to dot every i and cross every t because it's not going to work out like that 
And as God, as you get closer to the Lord, and as you receive revelation of him, he will help you with all the things that you may be going through or dealing with or want to see changed um, within you. And so that also brings me to another point is that you don't want to be on the other end of that spectrum and just think that you're standing strong mm. and uh, not searching, allowing the Lord to search your heart and having a hard heart and not having ears to hear or eyes to to see what the lord may be trying to show you about yourself and so definitely it's a balance of of being humble to receive the correction of the lord and to receive direction from the lord through his word and through other people other friends uh, in the faith that's why another reason why it's good uh, to have friends in the faith and, and in the truth if you can if, if you know, the, the truth has been revealed to you to find friends, other apostolic friends that you can be around, that you guys can, you know, that you can be accountable to one another. And so those are just a, a few things that I find really important and just that I would give advice to someone that's looking to grow. Uh, definitely who you surround yourself with. That's That's another key point too. We want to be not having a uh, bad company uh what is it evil evil communication corrupts good manners yes sir yes sir good manners and so uh we want to have good manners and, and <laughs> live according to the will of god and so we want to have a good surrounding not only in our environment but the people that surround us too so excellent excellent brother jamal yeah um so um my advice to anyone who may be struggling in their faith right now and this is coming from a person that once again this year has been one of the roughest years of my life and now witnessing i turn everything around for me you know um and of course all glory goes to god but my advice to that person would be don't give up you know i know things may be hard you know right now or whoever this person may be, you know, um, but God has a plan. God has a plan for you, you know, whatever you may be going through, lay it on the altar. Mm. You know, that's what I had to do with the various struggles that I was going through. I had to lay it on the altar. I, I cry, I've cried so many times this year, y'all won't even believe it, but you know what? God heard those cries, mm. God heard those prayers. And he, like I say, he's turning everything around for me, done done amazing things for me recently the fact that i'm even on this panel right now i didn't expect this this mm. is a blessing and then once again i'm just so humbled and thankful to be here i wasn't expecting this that was that was from the lord and if if, if the lord could do stuff like that for me if he could turn around the various things that i've been going through this year um if he could turn around for me i know he could do it for whoever may be watching uh this panel so don't don't give up you know have faith you know the lord is faithful if you sincerely cry to the lord and surrender everything that you're going through onto the altar unto him i promise you that he will turn everything around for you and that he will make a marvelous testimony for you so yeah don't give up awesome awesome first i want to say thank you too for uh joining tonight and taking time out of your out of your day to be on this panel um i was truly blessed i'm sure those that are watching uh, were, you know were blessed as well and um you know it's always a good thing for you know to hear us young people come together talk about these different things um because you know we're not in this fight alone so it's good for us to have an outlet to uh be an encouragement to one another so i want to say thank you once again and i want to say thank you to those that, that watch tonight God bless you, and we pray that you have a great rest of the weekend. Good night. God bless. You.